starts to multiply. You see multiple flickers of light as you draw closer and closer. And eventually, those flickers of light, along with it, you see a, a silhouette of what looks like tents. Do you go closer? Uh, I say there, see? Want me to check it out? Um, uh, sure, I'll, uh, I'll go with you. I say be wary. I mean, I'll stay with the horse. Good idea. Call if you need help. <laughs> the, uh, the, the getaway truck. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, okay. <laughs> Um, Take like a three point turn to run away. <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we, uh, Imagine we you're backing up and you hear like the beep beep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So, we gotta so, walk up. Okay, you walk up. All right. Here, I'll put you guys here. So, uh, you you go up to this kind of gathering of tents, and you see. Uh, campfires that are just like, like almost buried into the ground, as if they, they're they're meant to be protected from the blizzard. Uh, these seem to be the, the the flashes of light that you see in the distance. Um, all around, you, you don't really see that many people out in the open, though. You see one person in particular is is a. Uh, Kind of harvesting this, uh, this animal um, for for food. It seems. And I look to Ashton, and I say, "I've got your back." Oh, same. All right. <laughs> um. Sorry, <laughs> my mind just blanked there for a second. Uh, I guess we're, is we're, we're moving, we're checking it out. But, so there's there's like camps, there's, there's like a tents, and then there, or sorry, campfires. Mm -hmm. um, and they're sort of like buried to protect against like the blizzard. And then there's like a person harvesting, what was it, Mark? There's a person harvesting an animal. Uh, oh, I didn't actually put you guys on the map yet. Okay. Uh, okay. okay, here you go. Okay. Okay. Alright, alright, alright. All right, all right. Now we're in business. Alright, so I guess I guess you just call out to them. Uh hello there. Uh give me a second. I am fixing some map stuff. Okay. Make sure Sorry it's about safe that. before it. Motioning for everyone else. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Anyways, um, okay. So, um, I'll I'll just say like the people who are in the tents. I'm saying they're they're under the tent. They're not like on top, so they don't actually yeah. see or hear you. The, yeah. But the one person on the uh, that's like uh, harvesting the meat off of the the animal. They they look at you, but and. It, it looks like they they hear you, but they don't really say anything. They just kind of stare at you. Okay. I say, um, our our band would like to would like to speak. Is there any among you that that is willing? So, um, and actually, here, let me just like give the others like permission to to see through your character real quick. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Let's see how I'll just give them Poets and Pax point of view. Here you go. You could give us like a boat. Yeah. Just like <laughs> you know, the boat. Just like going nah, in. Nah, I'll just I'll just give them yeah, your your character's point of view. Okay. Anyways. Alright, everyone can see through Poets and Pax size now. So <clears throat> anyways. Um so they uh they they look at you right, um, as uh, this person and their friend like 
look amongst each other, and then you hear them speak in a language unknown to you. It's uh, I'll just say it's let's just say the regid language for for simplicity, right? Um, okay. Yeah. Um, but, but then you you look at them confused, and it it's quite apparent to you that they don't know how to speak common. Ah, uh, I see. Um, I was afraid of this. Okay. How do we get our points across? This is... This is tough. But, uh, if you see that they... That they are, that they're hunters, like... I guess like most, like most... <laughs> most people in this place. Hey, does your telepathy, does it transcend language barriers? Uh, I do not think so. Let me see. No, it says that the creature understands you only if it knows the language. Damn. Well, I guess it would still be strange for them to hear you inside of their head, wouldn't it? <laughs> that it that it would. Um, we wouldn't happen to have a linguist in our group, would we? We can we can go back and check. Maybe Freva knows something. That'd be the best bet. Okay. Now, okay. do you want to go back? Uh, sure. I'll I'll go back and uh, you can stay here. Um. It seems like they're not, uh, at least immediately hostile. Then uh, I'll like, I'll like head back to uh, to the carriage and relay the information. Okay. So I'm just gonna drag the rest of the party here. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So put them here like this, and then we add Freva. It's gonna be right here. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So, what she says. So, you just want me to speak to them, is that right? Uh, yes. Do you um? Do you know how? Oh, to be honest with you, it's not really a language. I'm. Fluent in. However, the memories I've received from the undead, there's a, a few basic things that I learned. I can try. Where are they all gone? Okay, so you see a further approach, right? And and as as you have like this big group kind of uh, assembled, right? Yeah, uh, it's on them a little, a little wary, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. so you see a few more of them, like you know, uh, gathered up, and they they even bring over like this uh, distinguished figure that comes from the, the the biggest tank, the biggest tent out of all of the tents here, and then um, see Freva say, let's. Is their anxiety a little bit? Would you mind backing up? Yep. Okay, okay not that, that I went far. too far. <laughs> 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 Holy um, moly. I sit, sit back here near this tent. All right. Set up the firing line in case it goes south. True, true. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so, so you see the, uh, the, the, the distinguished figure. It looks like. He's probably the chieftain of this uh, this tribe, and she walks up to him, and then she says, um, she says a few things in the rigid language, and you you see um you see the chi the chieftain kind of uh, a little confused because it's like a half-assed sentence essentially, uh, but then he responds back. And 
Parva doesn't really know what to say. She kind of like looks at you and she's kind of like, I'm not quite sure where I'm going with this. Oh no. Um, okay, okay. Um, so we're trying to find the, the ring, right, for Ajumon? Is that right? The ring of Ajumon? Yeah. Um, do we do we have any idea of like what Ottoman looks like? Do they know the name Ottoman? Yeah, do they know? Um. So, y y this this chieftain sees you conversing yeah. with Freva, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, trying to work things out, and then what he does is he actually, um. He doesn't draw his weapons up. He draws it out and he puts it onto the ground, and then he kneels onto the snow. And then he looks at you, right? Okay. And then he kind of gestures his hand like like an open palm facing up towards you. Okay. I um. I I I'll take I'll take my rapier. I'll pull it out. Then I put it my rapier on the ground. And then I will also kneel. And then Preva says, I, I think you have something going on better than I am. So I, <laughs> I'll, I'll be right here. Okay. Okay. So the chieftain Okay. Kind of turns around and and gestures one of his uh, followers to kind of come up, and you see this follower uh, bring some kind of a, a bowl, and it has some sort of like powder in it, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and then the other commoner, uh, or not commoner, the the other follower, uh, brings kind of like this, this uh, this uh, what do you call it? Uh, this flint to kind of ignite the powder, right? And then the chieftain gets all these materials, and um, and he starts to kind of craft some sort of uh, mixed powder and and some sort of like liquid that you don't know of uh, that he just takes out of his pocket, right? And and so. On top of that, he kind of takes a, a small cut of his uh, forearm and just like put some of his blood on it, right? And and then poof, you see kind of this this like air in front of him as the the this this concoction just kind of creates this this vapor. And then you see him kind of like wafting over a part of the vapor uh, and inhaling it. And he he kind of uh, gestures for you to do the same. Do you do it? Um, yes, I do it. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> okay. So. So jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so you do this and for a moment you you kind of um you you don't necessarily black out but it, the 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 blizzard the white snow around you starts to kind of like like gray out right but then everything around you seems slightly monochromatic and eventually it turns into black and white except with the chieftain in front of you. And then you can hear as if as if it's almost as if you can hear his thoughts. And he says Hello. Oh. Uh said oh, I I I commune to his to his thoughts to to his mind I said, Whoa. Powerful magic. It's not magic per se. It is just a ritual. 
a rigid ritual. It's science. Um, let's see. I see. Um, I, uh, what do I say? I say. Um, we have. Uh, we have come forth here to ask you about something. Then, have your friends also partake in this? Um, sure. I'll, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll motion. The other. So, yeah, there's this, there's still this kind of vapor that's around. Uh, it's look, it looks like it's, it's eventually going to dissipate, but if, if, if you need to, to do it, now's the time. Take a giant so, inhale. You you what? Take a giant inhale. <laughs> you take a do you inhale all of it for the rest of everyone? <laughs> hey everybody, take Hold a on. hit. You do it all for yourself. Blue. Hold on. Uh, take a hit of the blue. Yes. <laughs> oh shit! Okay. All right. All right. All right. Um, roll a con check. Let's see how this goes. All right, great. So you um you inhale all of this, right? And you start to hear a lot of thoughts, not just Ashton, not just the Regid Chieftain, but you hear all kinds of thoughts of anxiety. You you hear the feelings of the 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 other people around you um you hear things like what are these these people like what do they want from us and it's not like you know like um like uh it's not like you're talking to them or they're talking to you you're just overhearing all these thoughts and it's it's almost like it's it's like overloading you because they you're it's almost, essentially you're like hearing the thoughts of everyone in this tribe right now um what do you do? Um, I kind of, without realizing it, yell, uh, They seem worried! I, I shake my head. <laughs> Say we needed... <clears throat> uh, well, I suppose it's, it's too late. Um, right, so... Th the the chieftain, right? He 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 kind of gets closer towards Fusarium and he he, he Fusarium, you see him kind of like um put his hand towards your shoulder and kind of like do a downwards motion as if he's telling you to, to, to kneel down. Do you do it? Yes. Okay. You kneel down and you feel the <laughs> the, the prone <laughs> you kneel down and you feel the, the cold cold um no onto your knees but regardless right um he he kind of puts his hands close towards your face and then he, he kind of like waits for you to to give an acknowledgement like saying like go ahead do you do you let him what's he doing he says or he doesn't say anything he just kind of says he's just kind of waiting he says um He, he he's trying to communicate with you technically, but you can't filter out his voice in this this vast like flood of of thoughts overloading your your mind right now. I just let him do whatever. Okay. So, um, he presses his his hand towards your 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 forehead, right, and then he kind of like pinches your nose in a particular way, and then and then. He does an exhaling motion, gesture, gesturing for you to do the same. Okay, I do. Okay. You you do this, and some of the 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 puff that that you've inhaled gets exhaled out, and the thoughts start to fade away until there is one left, and he says. Uh, and there's, until there's just a few left, and then and then you hear the person in front of you saying, 
be careful. Uh, okay, my, my apologies. I can hear you, yes. So at this point, the, the gas is kind of dispersed, right? And then he says, follow me to my tent. I will, I will have the others help the rest of you. OK. Um, I, I get up, I put my rapier back in my uh, sheath, and then I, I tell everyone to uh, follow, follow this guy. He's a, he's a chieftain. You see everyone else going back to their tents, basically, as they kind of like leave you alone. Oh, oh wait. <laughs> wow. okay, let me let me let me just put you guys inside of the tent. Here you go. Okay, so, um, in his tent. You see a, a few uh, a few tubes. It looks like uh, <laughs> it looks like drugs, <laughs> right? But um, it's it's very clearly the same uh, materials that he used to uh, communicate with some of you just now, right? And he kind of offers up uh, it up to the to the rest of you who uh, have not taken it yet. Do you, do you does anyone not take it? I do drugs. <laughs> yeah, I I, I say mm, this looks healthy. Hey, where where is Raylan? Yeah, that's what I was. Wondering. I don't know where Raylan is. What? Am I not? Oh, oh it's <laughs> Raylan. I call up him under a put him pack's legs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so at this point, right? Um, yeah, you hear each other's thoughts. It's it's almost like it's an it's an open channel, uh, hmm. between all of you who are in this tent. And then he says, Welcome to the Regid tribe. Is there anything that you wanted? Not many seek for us. Okay. Uh, well, first of all, I say thank you for having us here. Not to worry. You don't seem the type to do harm. Uh, yeah. Uh, of course not. But, good people. But, but her on the other hand, she, she, uh, she has something to ask. Right. Do you know of any being? Well, first of all, do you know of an individual known as Lord Payne? He is the human ruler of a big portion of this region. Is that not true? Hmm. When is the last time you've seen or heard of him? A few years ago, when he was younger, a kid. I see. Well, I'm afraid to tell you that he is not quite human any longer. In fact, he has been consumed by an undead power that is vengeance for more. Now he raises armies of the undead, seeking for the relics of Atuman. Do you know of him? Lord Atuman? Well, of course. We have past stories about him in, oh? in our tribe for generations now. Would you be willing to share any of these stories? Hmm. Very well. I can share... I can share them. But I must warn you, I 
although it is our tradition. Lately, with our way of life, some pieces of the story has been lost on them. And that's just due to our culture dwindling. So I must apologize, but I'm nowhere as near as my grandfather. There's nothing to apologize for. Simply tell us what you're able. Very well. Allow me to prepare something. And then he tells you guys, he says, he says, um, could you please gather around this fire pit? And then he kind of has this fire pit that's in the middle. Um, let me let me see if I could find a, an asset for it real quick. Um, you can just put out a torch, right? Nah, dude, I gotta I gotta make it fancy, dude. Like, gotta, okay. uh, let me see here. Fire. Surely there's a there's an asset for it. Uh huh. Fireplace. Here we go. Maybe I'm searching for the wrong thing right now. Uh, campfire. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta make it immersive, bro. Gotta, gotta, gotta do it. 